All right, hi everyone, we're gonna get started. Uh, thanks for coming to our webinar. Um, we're just gonna start with a, sorry, I'm getting like feedback here. Um, we're just gonna start with like a brief overview of what the committee is, you know, what the time period is, what, what, um, what it was like in Russia at the time, and uh, kind of go over the background guide a little bit. And then from there, we'll go into um, stuff that we think should be talked about in committee and like recent issues that might be might have gone on in 1993 that will be pertinent to the committee mm -hmm. um as well as um maybe some specific notes about crisis tracks and directives and the overall um how committee is going to be run and then from there i think we're just going to allow you guys to um, ask some questions so we're going to ask that throughout um you guys submit questions um and we can approve them and then um, address them in this seminar so yeah um, yeah. Do you want to get started and give us a little overview of the committee? Yeah. Well, before that, we should introduce oh, yeah. ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I'll go. So, sure. I'm Janice. I'm currently a senior in Wharton studying finance management and operations and information management. Um, I guess, fun fact, well, I'm from Hong Kong, actually, so I guess India <laughs> is actually fun. closer fun. to, um, to home <laughs> than Penn. And fun fact... I don't know, fun fact, I used to play rugby, competitive rugby, so that's something cool. Um, and yeah, I'll be your chair for um, Almonk India. Okay, uh, I'm Alex. I'm a sophomore here at Penn in the College of Arts and Sciences, um, double majoring in economics and political science. Um, so this stuff is right up my alley. Um, and I'm from around Chicago. Um, and what's a fun fact about of mine? Um, I used to do theater competitively in high school, so I don't I don't really do it anymore. I've moved on to Model UN, bigger and brighter things. But um, yeah, I used to do that. Um, and I will be your crisis director for um, like India. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll just kind of briefly go through our background guide, just kind of like a couple of things. Like um, you know, I'm sure you guys can have a deeper read into what exactly goes on, but basically, um, as you guys all know. This is, um, our committee is like reconstructing Russia specifically. Um, we're looking at Yeltsin's cabinet and we're, one change that um, Alex will kind of talk about a little bit more later, but um, we're planning to start our committee um, as of November, 1993. So um, basically like the background guy will have kind of all the information that, um, that we have like before 1993, November, 1993. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, right now the background guide is updated through around February or March of 1993. Um, and actually we have included some information that is after that. Um, so I ju yeah, I just wanted to clarify in this broadcast that we actually will be starting committee in November of 1993. Um, don't panic, it'll all be updated in the background guide in probably a day or two. Um, and so basically the reason that we're doing this is because we wanted to get you guys right into all the crises that were going on at the time. Um, yeah, so for example, um, if you guys, I hope you guys have read the background guide. If you haven't, we're talking about, um, one of the, one of the big issues that we talked about in committee is, um, Yeltsin's economic plan, which was based on shock therapy, which basically just means a very, very rapid change from into a capitalist economy. Um, so something that's great about starting in late 1993, as opposed to early 1993, is that, um, those policies have already kind of begun and have already, we've are and Russia is already starting to see the effects of them. So our goal is that you guys as crisis characters, as well as the general committee as a whole can kind of, um, you know, see what the effects of shock therapy have been and move from there as opposed to them just starting and uh, committee being kind of boring for the first session when there's not really that much going on. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that also touches on a little bit about crisis. So like, obviously that will definitely be a topic of debate. We hope. Um, yeah. Well, I continue. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So kind of yeah. just like a <laughs> little bit, um, of an introduction, um, or just like kind of an overview of the committee. I don't want to, kind of go through the whole background guide with you yeah. guys just because uh, there's yeah. no point of doing that. <laughs> yeah. um, but essentially, you know, like we we all know that kind of the Soviet Union had kind of um, had a whole reform system or it had quite of a turmoil, um, you yeah. know, since the Cold War um, and since World War II. And um, essentially it had when it had gone through a couple of different reforms, like era of stagnation, mainly, um, you know, lack of productivity, um, a lot of different... Um, 
things and they went through a couple of period of times where they had different um, political leaders um, and political reforms specifically in you know 1980s um, where you know there were a couple of things that went through um, with policies specifically with you know like the listen and the open kind of um, are the campaigns not really campaigns like um, yeah I mean they're, they're policies enacted policies, by Gorbachev so yeah yeah and you know that kind of um, changed the um, the Soviet Union quite a bit um, and you know with that there's also Yeltsin who um, you know worked closely with um, with with that government but at the same time you know he also had his own ideas and had um, his own opinions as to you know how he wanted to kind of see the Soviet Union uh, go in the future so with that like you know he also instituted a lot of um, his ideas and so basically a lot of kind of political um, upheaval, a lot of the different protests that went on in, you know, in late 1980s, um, which led to ultimately in the late 1980s, kind of the loss of control and eventually the collapse of um, yeah. the Soviet Union. So, yeah, yeah. I, um, I just want like uh, Janice brought this up, but she mentioned that Yeltsin had a lot of issues with the Soviet Union. Um, and I think that's like a really important point to touch on um, before going into committee is that um, a lot of us, I think, associate um, what Russia might have been in the 1990s with what Russia is today under Vladimir Putin. And first of all, Vladimir Putin is a crisis character. So one of you guys um, is Vladimir Putin. I don't know who, whoever's watching. Um, but I think it's really important to note that Yeltsin and Putin are not the same person. They're actually they have very, very different models for what how they want to see the future of Russia. And they did at the time, and they still do. They still do. Well, Yeltsin's no longer alive, but uh, uh, Putin still does today. So, for example, um, Yeltsin believes in like a very strong capitalist society. He was very fed up with the Soviet Union and really wanted to see a new system enacted. Um, hence his uh, his use of shock therapy and other policies. Um, and whereas um, Vladimir Putin um, is much more focused on more of a command economy, not not a socialist economy, but a command economy, which means that the state has much more control. Um, so I think that that's just like a, an important thing to note um, going into committee. Um, I would just like urge delegates, you guys, to distance yourselves from the Russia of today and, and think about the Russia of the um, of the early 1990s, which is kind of why in the background guide we included so much that has to do with the history of it is because the history is just so important as to like seeing what the ideology of the people was at the time as well, the ideologies of the people were at the time, as well as um, really like what's the historical context that this committee is being placed in. I think that's so important with historical committees like this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, what else is there to mention? Um, so we can go through a little bit of like the potential crisis topics. Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've talked a lot about um <clears throat> I've talked a lot. Of, I'll go through I'll go through the crisis topics uh, cuz I'll be on the crisis side of things. Um, so I I obviously I've mentioned shock therapy, but there are also a lot of like other really important issues that are going on. Um, by the way, for those who came late, um, please submit questions throughout this. Um, I think you guys know the forum to submit um, any questions you have, but we're looking at it right now. We're looking at the live stream. So if you guys have any questions throughout this, and we're going to ask afterwards specifically, um, please send questions and we'll address them like right away because uh, this is obviously for you guys um, even more than it is for us. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, <clears throat> anyway, in addition to Yeltsin's economic model, um, something that's obviously very, very pertinent to committee right now is constitutional reform in Russia. Um, this is a really difficult issue to address, I know, because um, obviously the kind of legislative framework of a country is really difficult to kind of get your hands around. So it might be difficult to be like, how should the constitution be reformed? Um, it's a, <clears throat> like, for example, it's really easy to say, oh yeah, the constitution of Russia at, in 1993 wasn't very well formulated, it should be reformed. But it's a lot harder um, for you guys, as well as for me, for anyone, to think about how it is, how you could possibly change that. So I'd urge you guys to do some further research into that. Um, and I think that a well-prepared delegate will definitely do further research into that topic because it's a topic that, first of all, we didn't really touch on that much in the background guide because we kind of wanted to leave it up to you guys. Um, and also I think it's something that's very, very important and will definitely come up in committee at least once or twice. Um, <clears throat> okay, also, um, very important crisis. I think this, this is a really, really cool crisis in my opinion. Um, but in a very important, um, 
um, aspect of debate will be the the um, issues over nuclear arms deals or nuclear ar this nuclear disarmament, um, because at the time people don't really think about it, but um, the Soviet Union included the states of the republics of uh, Ukraine as well as Kazakhstan during the Cold War, and at the end of the Cold War, because the Soviet Union kind of um, broke up so fast, um, the nuclear weapons that the Soviet Union had. Had st they had stationed them in Ukraine and Kazakhstan and didn't really have time to get them back into Russia at the time of the collapse. So that's a really, really interesting topic of debate, in my opinion, because that's something that like we're definitely going to have to address very early on in committee because it's um, obviously a security concern if Ukraine and Kazakhstan, who are kind of unstable states at the time, have access to nuclear weapons. Also, they are... Um, historically Russia's nuclear weapons that were placed in Ukraine and Kazakhstan. So obviously for security reasons, it's really important to get those back. Um, so I think that's a really cool topic of debate. Um, I know that um, delegates always love talking about nuclear weapons. I do too. So um, that's a really interesting topic. And if you guys are really interested in it, then definitely bring it up in committee and it'll be, it'll definitely be addressed. Um, <clears throat> kind of on a similar note of like the different kind of fragment, the fragmentation of the Soviet Union. Um, We've talked, there's definitely a lot of secessionist movements going on, and I think this is a really cool issue. So um, we included secession in the North Caucasus, but there actually were other regions that um, were considering secession, especially towards the, um, the more southern regions of Russia, including the North Caucasus. Um, but I think this is really important because um, at the time as well as today, uh, Russia is still facing the exact same issues. So I think it's something that is like should definitely be addressed because it's obviously a very serious concern. Um, I don't know how much background got knowledge you guys have, but today um, there's also a lot of secessionist issues with Russia over the Chechen Republic. So um, I can just mention, obviously this won't be brought up in committee, but I think it's a really cool thing for you guys to know about because it'll hopefully maybe um, provide you guys with some insight on committee. Um, but there have been two, if not, I mean, arguably three civil wars that have occurred in Chechnya since um, the time of when we're going to start committee in Yeltsin's cabinet over uh, with Russia over Chechnya, because Chechnya wants to establish itself as its own independent republic, and Russia says, no, that's not okay. Um, so I think this is a really cool topic of debate. Um, I think nuclear weapons and, you know, kind of secessionist topics are really interesting and are something that um, are obviously very important and relevant today. Um, so as I said, I think it's really important to distance ourselves from the Russia of today, but it's also, I think, really cool to see the connections of, from Russia, um, 30, 30 or so years ago and today, uh, or 20 or so years ago and today. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, economic developments, uh, so we talked a little bit about that, um, civil unrest, um, yeah, obviously, so, so, um, Yeltsin's cabinet is a fledgling government, which means that you're obviously going to have some internal security disputes. Um, so that's something that definitely should be addressed in committee. Um, and then, yeah, so this is really important. Um, political corruption. I think this is, our, uh, in my opinion, one of the most interesting issues that will hopefully be talked about in debate because not only is political corruption a major concern, um, within the government of Russia at the time, but also will likely be a concern among you guys as delegates because you, all of you as delegates, as we've included, um, as we as so the character bios are going to be updated um, as of tomorrow or the next day. But as your character bios, you will see from them, a lot of people in committee were dealing doing some pretty corrupt things at the time. So um, I think that that's something that I think is first of all like really, I, I think a really good delegate will stick to their um, character's point of view, which means if you're a character that we mentioned or that you did research on who has dealt, has done some corrupt acts like in the past and is not necessarily the most um, transparent person with their actions, I think that the best delegate will follow that and will not shy away from that. Because I think that a really cool, um, some advice that I could give you guys as delegates is to try to use corruption cleverly. Don't try to, you know, be like, kill everyone in committee. Because if, if you send a note to Christ that's like, kill everyone in committee, we'll be like, Sorry, we can't really do that. But, you know, I urge you guys, you know, I will obviously will give specific examples. I want you guys to think of them on your own. But I urge you guys to be clever with how you think about corruption in the committee because I think that it's something that um, is really important to Russia at the time. So I think it should be addressed. But it's also something that's really fun and can make committee a really, like, a lot of fun for you guys, especially towards um, 
<clears throat> Saturday and Sunday of committee when we'll be, um, or Saturday of committee, we'll be doing some really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so I think that that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if there's any other issues I haven't talked about. Um, that's a lot of it. I know, sorry, I hope I hope that wasn't too much, but um, <clears throat> I just wanted to give you guys like a brief run through of like what we could possibly be seeing in crisis updates um, and also what you guys can be thinking about for um, the committee itself. Are there any questions so far? Yeah. So we don't have any questions yet, but please, please, yeah. please ask us questions because this is kind of, this is your time. So if you have any questions, um, we'll kind of take, we can take a little break or something and we can ask and we'll kind of look at the stream <laughs> <coughs> questions here. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so um, what else? Oh, this is, I also want to mention this. So I hope that what I, what we've been talking about has been helpful that um, you guys kind of have a good idea of like. You know, what crises we could possibly see, um, what's the historical background, you know, why is this important? Obviously, I think I, we both think this committee is, like, so interesting. Um, and I think that it's, um, what I will say is from that, I think it's it's absolutely imperative that uh, directives are not drafted before coming to committee. Um <clears throat> if we see any directives that are drafted before, obviously, so I'm sorry, we'll bring, we'll bring this up on the first day of conference as well. <clears throat> But if we see directives that are drafted before committee, um, that will obviously not be a good thing. And um, uh, we, we <clears throat> the most important thing in committee for us is to see you guys debate with each other and to make directives um, cohesively and not for one delegate to take over everything. Um, so I think for us, I think that um, what's really important to see is an ideal delegate is um, someone who will not only use the crisis side of things and, you know, be a really great crisis delegate. And um, for those of you who have never done um, crisis model UN committees before, what that means is you guys will be really great behind the scenes. You know, when you're sending notes to crisis asking to do things, you'll be really great delegates. But not only that, I think the ideal delegate will also be really, really great in committee and will be really cooperative. Um, and we'll, we'll obviously be keeping an eye on that. We'll probably be cycling through the crisis room and committee room so we can both see both sides of things. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's a lot of it. Um, I encourage you guys to ask, ask us about, um, what you guys think, like you, what we should look for in delegates or, uh, if you guys have any questions as to like what's acceptable in committee or what's not acceptable in committee. Um, because, so we have one question, so I'll address it in a second. Um, because, uh, obviously that's really, really relevant to you guys. Um, so let's read this question. Let's see. The questions tab isn't working for me in Firefox. Ooh. Questions tab. What do you mean the questions tab? Ooh, I don't know what the questions tab is. Um, um, can someone write... So you guys can write questions to us, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But then... So I think... Wait, try approving it. Okay, approving. can you... Okay. Or should I approve this yeah. one? Wait, let's see. Let me just read it first. I would like to urge all down this coffee. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to approve that. <laughs> all right. Um, so can people see the tab, the question that I just approved? Um, or, yeah. Yeah, or I mean, comment. I don't know. Maybe, wait, is a DT here? Maybe I can, like, Skype with a DT or Skype chat. Um, sorry, guys. A DT, if you're there, if you can go on Skype, I'm going to, like, message you. <laughs> um, yeah, also kind of just to go off of what Alex um, mentioned a little bit about delegates, I think it's really important that, you know, you really do take on the character um, and kind of like be the character. I think that's like something that we really definitely look for and like kind of build up your portfolio power, like use it wisely. Um, so, you know, you don't necessarily have to do anything like spectacular on the first day of committee or like, you know, um, on Friday or anything. But like, if you do kind of like, if you have a tract or idea of like what you want to do and that you kind of slowly like, oh, like get to know the right people or, you know, like befriend the right people and like you slowly kind of get into the character and like, um, you know, I don't know, build up your whole like army and then you like, will probably let you do a lot more stuff, you know, like with that power once you have and once you kind of slowly garnered it yourself, um, you know, like we'll probably yeah. give you a lot more power, you know, on, on Saturday on like kind of um, later on in the day. So like bear that in mind, um, uh, in yeah. terms of like not trying to like just go. No, for absolutely. Everything. Yeah. I mean, first of all, um, you know, uh, Thursday and Friday, the first few days of committee are much more important about getting you guys into it. You know, making sure that you guys are having a great time. 
um, we're going to be encouraging like all delegates, you know, to, to be, do as best as they can and, you know, work as hard as they can. Um, and I think that, like I said, if you, if someone sends a note to crisis, that's like, you know, kill everyone in committee, we're going to be like, well, no, but you know, if you do some things that are more nuanced, if you do things that are more, you know, require a lot more steps, we're going to respect that a lot more. Um, <clears throat> for example, like if you guys like make some sort of crisis, if you guys like send a note to crisis, like, um, that has something to do with your character on Thursday and then on Friday too, and then Saturday, and then towards the end of Saturday, you're like, Hey, use this, that I, use this stuff that I've been working on, um, and to do something even cooler. Um, that's going to be something that we respect because we're going to see, Hey, like this person has a really, really good thought out plan. Um, this person's like really trying to do a good job. Um, and, uh, that, so that's really important. I'm like, at least from the crisis side of things for me, that's like very, very important. Um, okay. One second. Oh, okay. So, uh, Aditi mentioned that, um, she's one of our ADs for conference. She's going to be great. You guys will get to know her. Um, she mentioned that you guys might be seeing ads throughout this. Um, okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> if you do, uh, don't. Don't worry about it. We're gonna we're so we're we're recording this yeah. as well. So um, you guys can hopefully um, uh, see it afterwards if you're missing any parts of it. You yeah. hopefully you can like go back to the parts that you missed. Uh, but obviously, please still stick with us because it's really important if you guys ask questions. Yeah. Um. Okay. So anyway, so the first question that we got was, or it wasn't a question, but it was more of a comment. So I'll just read it aloud to you guys. Um. If if you guys aren't on the questions page, it said. I know that many of us participate in Model UN to win the Best Delegate Award, but given the scope of this committee's topic, I would urge all delegates to try to cooperate, not compete, to try and conceive a different economic and political path Russia might have taken in order to better understand Russia as it is today. Try to participate for the intellectual gain, not awards, because that really ruins the whole purpose of it. All I can say is absolutely. Um, not only, so first of all, if there are delegates who are being very um, conniving in committee and aren't willing to work with each other, um, you know, that, that first of all, doesn't, that doesn't look good. You know, we want, we want to see delegates who are, you know, want to work with other people and are really genuinely interested in the topic, um, and are not being, are not trying to, you know, push people out of committee, um, for, to, for their own personal gain. First of all, that's something that we look for is to make sure that you're not doing that. And second of all, um, oh, you're like, you're right. This isn't about awards, you know? Um, like maybe the last session of Saturday you can make is more about awards if you're interested in that, but the rest of committee is so much more about, you know, having a good time, um, you know, like making the best of this topic. Cause I think it's super interesting. Yeah. Um, and we both do and, um, you know, like making, yeah, exactly. Setting a different political and economic course for Russia, mm -hmm. because as we mentioned, um, in the background guide, Russia wasn't doing so hot from from 1993 through 1997. But if we can change things around, you know, and make it make a better system than it is than it was in the late 1990s and even than it is today, that's something that we absolutely want to do. Um, so I just realized something that I forgot to mention. Um, thank you for that question, by the way, whoever submitted it. Um, so something that I want to talk about is that I know in, in the background guide now, um, actually, Okay, wait, what, I'm trying to think of, like, if I should talk about this first. Okay, yeah, so before I talk about anything relevant to the last topic, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, um, relevant to the last question that was asked, um, I bet a lot of you have not done crisis committees before. Um, so the thing that is really important about crisis committees is that it's not a, it's not, it's not as much of a conniving environment. Um, something that I, so I did general assemblies in high school, and I enjoyed them, but they were always super competitive. And there were always, you know, you know, there were always, um, you know, what are called power delegates who would dominate the room and would go around and, and try to force everyone to agree with their opinions. Um, something that's amazing about Crisis and the reason why I've loved doing it in college is that it's so much more of an interactive experience. It's so much more about cooperation. And if you're, you know, if you're trying to, be that power delegate who's going to, you know, go around and uh, try to, you know, submit people to your opinion, that's not necessarily going to work as well in crisis because crisis is one, a much smaller environment. So it's not, it's much harder to do that. And two, um, the, we're not trying to write resolutions in committee. So there isn't, the great thing about crisis is that there's not one full end to it. You're not working towards a single thing throughout the committee. There's more of a lot of different things that you're working on and will be working on throughout committee. 
Um, so yeah, so um, I'll, I guess I'll mention that too. Um, but um, uh, yeah, so so if you guys have never been to Run Crisis before, we don't have resolutions in this committee. We have what are called directives. So I know that we've mentioned them a few times, but to clarify what a directive is, um, they're basically much smaller documents that um, I don't think if we've necessarily agreed on a number of sponsors that's required for them yet. Mm -hmm. Usually we would we would ask for probably two or three sponsors in order for it to be, or three or four, meh, probably more, probably four sponsors for it to be um, brought to the floor, which is obviously a much smaller number. So it's not as much about, you know, going around and making sure that you have signatories on your working papers. Um, the idea of a directive is that you it's about a specific issue. So let's say we're talking about shock therapy. I won't say what the directive could be, but you would write a directive that's very specific towards addressing shock therapy and how how we should continue the economic plan or change it or how should we a address the effects of whatever crisis updates we'll be sending to you guys. So someone who's a, who's a sponsor of it would submit it to the floor um, and then uh, you can motion for it to be addressed in committee and then it'll be addressed and we, we can debate on it and then in the end it's going to be a um, majority rule to see if it'll pass or not. Um, and that's a very, that's a much quicker process than it is in other committees. So obviously we'll put a, a, a cap on the number of directives that we accept at any given time. But, um, for example, I've been in committees where we've passed, um, and I would encourage to, uh, uh, it means that you have a good committee if you pass this many. I've had committees where you pass as many as 15, 15 directives, 15, 20 directives throughout, throughout the weekend. Um, so I would encourage that. That's really important for me and for Janice is like to work together to create those directives and to move uh, move forward from there. Because um, directives are a great way to combine how what's going on in committee and like how you're acting in committee as well as trying to affect the crisis side of things. Um, so both me and Janice think very highly of directives. I think they're really, really important for committee. Um, they're really, really important for debate. Um, and so I would encourage you guys to think about a lot about that. And if you don't know what a directive is, we included it in the background guide um, and kind of what it what it's like. And if you have any other questions, um, I would encourage you guys to look online. If you guys can go on uh, maybe bestdelegate.com or other websites that are uh, tailored towards uh, uh, high school delegates, um, look up kind of what is a crisis committee? Like what are the best things to do in a crisis committee? Um, what's a directive? What is a, like, what's a, a personal communique? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, jargon that's very specific to crisis committees that I think, uh, obviously, we'll, we will talk a lot about in the beginning, in the first few committee sessions, uh, uh, Janice specifically, and I will go over, like, like what you have to know to be in a crisis committee. Um, so, but what I, well, all I can say is do not worry if you've never done a crisis committee. Um, I had never done any crisis committees until college and ended up loving them and doing quite well in them. Um, so, I would not worry if you don't know what a crisis committee is. Like, we'll go over everything at the beginning of committee and making sure everyone's on the same page. We might even do, like, a mock debate over, like, how to see, like, how it'll work. Um, we might do a little um, a little tutorial session. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, just um, kind of, like, to kind of summarize a little bit, like, in terms of, like, crisis, you can expect, like, a lot of, like, note passing, like, a lot of, like, it's kind of, it's, like, a lot more informal than, like, what you can expect in a general assembly um, or kind of, like, more of the bigger committees. Um, you know, we'll be kind of sitting, pro hopefully, I, I don't really exact, um, know the, the kind, the, the layout of the room, but we'll be sitting, you know, on long tables and things like that. So, you know, you have like your notes or you pass it along and then we'll have like people constantly like picking up notes, like going to the crisis room, yeah. <laughs> um, and like crisis obviously coming in and like, you know, like maybe doing some, doing something, yeah. you know, things like that. It's like a lot more relaxed and a lot more chill. So like, definitely don't worry about it. Um. Yeah, on that we'll note, yeah, <laughs> I, all I can say is, like, we're going to have some really fun crises. Um, uh, obviously, I don't want to give anything away. Um, but, you know, yeah, like, we're we're here to have fun, too. You know, this yeah. is really fun for us. That's why we're going, that's why we're coming to Island Lake India. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, all I can say is uh, make it fun for yourselves. Make it fun for us. Uh, we'll try to make it fun for you. Um, yeah, um, what else? Um are there, any other, are there any other questions? Yeah, please ask us questions. Please, please, please. Um, how many people do we have right here? Three. Three. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you guys also, like, you know, don't have any questions right now, but you have some later, feel free to email us. Um, I think it's re reconrussia at almondindia.com, but I... 
probably um, our sec gen or um, yeah. Actually, let me make sure it's on the website. Yeah, Um, or it's on the website. Um, But yeah, feel free to ask us any questions. Like email us. Um, We'll you know we'll definitely get back to you with regards to different things. Um, But yeah, like no position papers. So like just like do your research. Kind of just read all about Russia. Oh yeah, that's important. There are no, um, there are no position no papers. No position papers. So yeah, yeah so we're we're gonna be um, um, kind of kind of the reason behind that is because we want to see a lot more of what you guys are doing in committee. Because like we said, a lot of you might not have ever done crisis before, so you might not really know how to write a crisis position paper. Um, so um, so obviously you don't have to worry about that for I'm like India because there aren't going to be any position papers. Um, so like that kind of points to like a lot of what's more important is having a good time in committee and, you know, showing, showing your stuff in committee itself and not bringing anything pre-written to committee. Um, okay. Yes. I think that, or I don't know if there is an email here. Yeah, no, there actually is not an email on here. So just to reiterate what it is, it's here. Could you tell them exactly? Yeah, it's yeah. recon, R-E-C-O-N, Russia at almonk-india.com. Um, yeah. But I think, I think probably our um, sec gen and DG probably will yeah, have, um, exactly. we'll let you guys know kind of in terms of like if you want to get in contact with us like, and you can just like let them know and then they'll forward the emails to us. So yeah, please do. I'll actually, you know, I'll actually check the email to see. Yeah. If yeah. if the chat isn't working, um, and like you guys can't submit questions, definitely uh, feel free to uh, send us an email if you have it, um, and uh, we can answer that as well. So we'll, we'll why don't we stay on for like a little while, and we'll just yeah. wait to see if there's any questions, and if there's not, then we can uh, we can head out and uh, you guys can ask questions via email. But uh, we would definitely encourage you to ask us in person because obviously you can gain a lot more information from us in person than uh, or via Skype than. Uh, um, just over an email. Um, yeah. So. So conference is in yeah. 10 days. Well, no. 15. Conference is in. It's about two weeks. Yeah. So that's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks from Thursday, right? Yeah. yeah. We're really excited. I think it'll be. Yeah. So I'm so excited. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. So yeah. I mean, I guess to speak a little bit more. Should we like do a little bit more of like a bio on us? Like what we do with the IAA? Like, oh, sure. Kind of? yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, we're both involved in the International Affairs Association here at Penn, which is um, basically Penn's uh, umbrella organization for all things international, all things Model UN. Um, so, I mean, uh, so Janice will speak a little bit more about like with the community outreach that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but so for, um, for the International Affairs Association, we also host a college conference called um, UpMonk, the University of Pennsylvania Model United Nations Conference. Um, so that's actually this weekend. So we're all preparing for that a lot. Um, for that committee, I am the crisis director for um, the court of Kublai Khan, which is um, about Kublai Khan and the Mongol dynasties of the 1200s, which I am very excited for. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm also a um, on the secretariat for Isle Monk in Philadelphia. Uh, so the Ivy League Mongol Nations Conference in Philadelphia, um, which will, which is hosted every year in January. It's ten um, o'clock. It's ten o'clock. It's okay. not. <laughs> it's not 10 o'clock. Um, so um, anyway, I, if if any of you are going to Isle Monk, I'm um, definitely give me uh, send me an email because um, I definitely be excited to meet you guys. Um, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. Um, as Alex mentioned, um, we're both part of the IAA, and so for me specifically, I'm the director of the community outreach and engagement um, branch. So basically, a lot of things what we do is not really model UN, but then. It's also international affairs, kind of international relations related. So this year, so every year we do kind of like two things mainly. So one is like we do, we create modules where, you know, we focus on a region. So this year we're doing Sub-Saharan Africa and we do, you know, a couple modules and basically we create the modules. We go to Philadelphia high schools, a couple of the schools around the area, and then we present the module to them. So it's a completely different experience. Like they've never done this before. You know, a lot of times like it's like just not part of their curriculum and they really enjoy it. We just kind of want to like let them know, you know, what's going on in the region. Like there's different kind of aspects, economic aspects. Um, and uh, we'll be doing one in foreign um, on foreign influence in Africa, which will be really, really cool. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's kind of the school visits part of it. And then we also have a conference um, in February that we host, which is the Penn International Relations Conference. 
Um, so that's a little bit of a different thing. Um, you know, it's not so much model UN, but it's more of a, you know, a forum where kids come in and kind of have, you know, they, they have different like background guides, like different topics, but then, you know, they're not representing a country. They're not representing anyone. They're kind of just like here by themselves, um, you know, speaking about, you know, their opinions and they kind of like have an open, de not really debate even, um, just open forum of discussion where they can just like, you know, talk about the issues that are facing um, Africa or, you know, just like anything like that. So um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And, um, and yeah, so that's kind of like a little bit of what we do. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry, just to reiterate, um, I know that, um, I think that you guys are seeing ads throughout this. It, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. um, but we will. We are recording this, so if you guys like have have missed any portions of it, um, don't worry about that. Uh, you guys will uh, will record this and it'll be posted. Um, yeah, but we'll post it, yeah. yeah. So again, um, we'll wait a few minutes. Um, yeah. We just want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity <laughs> to ask questions if you want to. Um. um so did you ask? Yeah, qualities of a good delegate. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Okay, so one of our ADs just asked me maybe to go over um, what we think the qualities a good delegate should have. So we've talked about them like a little bit like specifically, mm -hmm. um, but a little more generally. Do you want to talk about kind of what you see in a good delegate on the committee side of things? So actually in the committee room and I can talk about the crisis side of it. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Sure. Um, so I guess like just kind of like the main things I you know I look for in a good delegate. I think we mentioned a lot of it before, but like definitely cooperation and not trying to just be like, you know, um, speak up all the time obviously like i'll keep track and my 80s will you know will help me keep track of, of like you know who's speaking and things like that and we'll make sure that we have um kind of balance as to like everyone has the chance to speak and like we will obviously encourage those who you know who might not be as vocal to speak so um i think in, in terms of that like you know i'll i think we'll have a good balance and definitely um bring up certain things in committee like i think i would just love to see you know you um if you have something or like something goes wrong like definitely let me know um and just in general like cooperation i think like that's definitely like one of the main things like just yeah. not try to just don't be like overpowering um and just kind of like build up as i said before like build up your character i love to see people in character as well so yeah. like, if you have like gonna say, costumes yeah, or yeah. like you know things like that i think like yeah. you know just like well you gotta be you have to be in uh, western <laughs> business attire so uh you can i don't know if you can necessarily come in costumes yeah maybe but, not or maybe but... <laughs> maybe you don't I, I don't necessarily know how it works so but you know if wrong. you can bring costumes or yeah. anything like that i think it'll yeah. be really cool um and yeah, I think I just kind of want to see like a character build up and like use your powers, like use what you have or like little things like your little connections or like, you know, just like think about in interesting things and like really like creative things that you can do with yeah. your character. Um, and, no, and yeah, ultimately, obviously, like I think, you know, in terms of like tangible things that we want to see, obviously like, when with directives, um, we want to see actionable items on your directives that, you know, really can yeah. be implemented. Absolutely um and you know like obviously with you know like with support of committee so like you know if you bring up good points like obviously like you know if you have you know good support behind you definitely that's something that we do take into consideration yeah so obviously i mentioned that directives are really important um but as kind of an aside to that mm -hmm. um we're if if the directive that's being written or is being addressed in committee is uh you know very is is very either either one like very short or two, way too long, or three, kind of doesn't really talk about a lot, um, that's not really gonna, that, that's not something that we really respect in committee. Um, obviously, it, it's, it's really important, that it's, it's great that you guys pass those types of directives, but I think that the more, the directives that we're going to be looking at a lot more closely and that we're going to, you know, think are, uh, you know, much, be much better in their quality as well as in their, you know, what, what it shows about, you um, are your guys' like substantive knowledge on the issues is going to be much more cohesive directives that are one not repetitive, um, are two two um, involve a lot of different ideas, and three um, are not as long as a as like a normal resolution would be in a in a, a general assembly. Because as I said, the really important thing about directives is that they're targeted, um, they're targeted, they're they're focused, and they are. Um, um, what's I, I, they're, they're, uh, you know, they, they show a lot of knowledge on the issue. I think that a lot of people can get kind of freaked out by crisis committees because, um, they do require like a lot, I think a lot more preparation than a uh, general assemblies require because a lot of times you can walk into a general assembly and, you know, you, 
have the normal spiel that you can give. You have the like you know the normal things that are brought up in committee. Um, but I think that what's really cool about crisis is that every crisis committee is so different. Um, and that can be kind of scary, but it's also really cool and like really fun. And like, that's what we're trying to emphasize, like how, how fun it can be if you, uh, make the best of it. Um, okay, cool. Wait, we got another crisis. Another, uh, question. Okay. This is a great question. Okay. Thank you. Whoever asked this. Um, the question is, if you guys can't see it, here's the question. It's. During the conference, are we allowed to refer to what the actual people, Boris Yeltsin or any other character, actually did or their stand on the Russian economy in November 1993? Or are we allowed to make our own stand on the topic? Okay, this is a great question. So, as we mentioned, we're changing the committee to starting in November 1993. So that's the most important thing to get out of this. Um, and the second most important thing, I think, is yes, we're trying to make it as accurate as possible. Um, so, to my understanding, um, almost everything about about uh, committee through about Russia through 1993 is uh, we're we're not changing anything about that. So um, basically, everything that occurs up to November of 1993 has actually occurred and will have actually occurred in committee, if that makes sense. Um, but in kind of in relation to that, something that you guys will see, as I mentioned, if you guys weren't here earlier, if any of you weren't here earlier, as I mentioned. Um, we're updating the character bios and we're updating the actual crisis characters and they will be released hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, like you guys will get them super soon. You'll have tons of time to go over your characters and like see what you like about them and what you want to, what you want to address in committee. Um, so the important thing about those characters, however, is that some things in those characters have been changed. So I don't think anything in committee itself has been changed, but the characters and like who you guys are actually playing in committee has been changed. So look at look at that. Um, in all of the characters that we have changed, we've mentioned what the change is. Um, so definitely be sure to keep an eye on that. Um, so for example, if you guys look up a certain character and you're like, hey, that that's not who this is, um, don't worry about that. Um, it'll hopefully it'll will have be addressed in the actual character bios that you guys get. Um, yeah. Okay. So didn't uh, some. So, I mean, I guess, like, like finally, in response to that question, I would say, um, yeah, like, you, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't change anything that they're saying. I wouldn't, I, what I, basically what I'm saying is, um, Janice is probably going to act as Boris Yeltsin. So, you're, you can't, you can't say something that she didn't say, because she'll say, hey, that's not true. I didn't <laughs> say that. So, that, that's all I can say about that. Um, yeah, I think that, um, you guys can kind of be clever with, um, what, you want to change, you know, like, and you can do that through crisis and like, we'll let you know if that's acceptable or not. Mm -hmm. But, um, definitely I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, Hey guys, like in October of 1993, like there's, there's all these riots in Leningrad that like no one knew about, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mention that or in St. Petersburg that, that no one knew about. I mean, if it's not true, then it's, 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 uh, it, it really doesn't add anything to committee if it's not true. So, um, yeah, that's kind of important. But that, I mean, on a similar note, we will be changing history. You know, we're not going to follow exactly what happened uh, in the 1990s in Russia. So, um, yeah, cool. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily going to be yeah. any more questions. I mean, again, like, as we said, like, email us if Here, you I'm need anything. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely be answering questions and other stuff. Okay, cool. I'm just asking one of our ADs if she thinks that there's anything else we should talk about. And then um, after that, I think we'll we'll say goodbye. Um, we have three have ADs questions. also. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have three of them. Um, so it's... Aditi, Aditi Nishant, Nishant, and... Nishant, and... Uh, need, 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 yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. You'll, They're really you'll great. We all video chat with them. They're awesome. So, yeah, um, yeah you, guys will, you guys will like them a lot. Um, and pro some of you probably know them. Um, okay. So, I'm just gonna see if she has anything. And then, I don't know if we... I'm just trying to think if there's any questions that I would have as a delegate mm -hmm. um, about the committee. Um, maybe... So we talked a little bit about, like, what a crisis committee is. I don't think we necessarily... We talked about what the committee could potentially talk about. Yeah. Um, huh. 
there might be midnight crisis <laughs> so maybe yeah. um yeah. we'll see about that um hmm, i don't know what else here talk about changing something quick okay this is a good this is a good point um Okay, so this is a this is a good point. So uh, a DT on one of our ADs asked us to maybe go over what what has been changed in the background guide. Um, so as I said, not that much in the actual substantive version of the background guide has been changed, but um, I think you guys will see in the character bio list that one of the characters is um, Alex uh, Rutskoy, who was the vice president of Russia at the time, and technically in November of 1993 he was in prison, but. We're not going to talk about that in committee. Um, you know, I think that potentially he could be put in prison, but like, I don't think that's necessary. Like we don't know what we're saying is that we don't necessarily have to follow history. Um, and that, that's something that has been changed in the background guide for the sake of making sure that we have a delegate who could serve as the vice president and we have, and he could still do things and not be in prison the entire time, because obviously you can't do anything from prison. Um, so that's, I'm going to look through the background guide really fast to see if there's anything else that we've changed, but I don't, really don't think that we changed that much. We changed, the history is obviously all the same. Yeah. Um, I mean, the character list, um, I think we made some changes in the character list um, yeah. at the end, but then like, again, we'll send the most updated list with all the character bios out um, in the next couple of days. So um, obviously not one, like, none of you are going to be Yeltsin, so, oh. you know, on that, you know, on that front. Here we go. It's a great question. Okay, so if you guys see it, it says, is bringing up or saying rather controversial topics shunned upon or not allowed? Um, I would encourage whoever, the delegate who sent that to, um, I sound like I'm in a chair now, uh, to, <laughs> like, send, a, send another comment to us by what exactly you mean by controversial topics. Um, because if you're going to say things that are, you know, um, kind of rude or uh, offensive to people, you know, that would be outside, you know, outside of the room, if you're going to address like a group of people and maybe say something that would be like prejudicial or, or in, or so, in that, in that way, I would encourage you not to say that in committee. Um, but if it's something that's staying true to your character, if what you mean by controversial is like maybe uh, cornering one delegate and being like, be if let's say that like, I don't know if this is true. Let's say Alexander Rutskoy like hates Vladimir Putin in committee. He's like, you're like, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you're being strict to your, to your character, then that's cool. You know, that's fun. But if you're, if you're being, I, I don't know how to say it. Like, you know, if you're being prejudicial to a group of people, just because that character might have been, I would encourage you not to be controversial. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much what I would say about controversial topics. Yeah. Um, if there's anything else. Um, yeah, so, wait, let me see if I have a calendar, or one second. If there's a information, or if there's a, I'm trying to find if there's a, like a, um, the contact us sheet? Yeah, no, I'm trying to see if there's a, uh, oh, here, conference schedule. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so um, let me just go over when our committee sessions are, because now we, we didn't know, but here's the official list. Yeah. So um, we're going to have our first committee session from, uh, I don't, oh my God, I'm so sorry, we're used to time in the United States, so we don't go by 24 hours, uh, we don't go by it's military five. time. Five. So it will, but we should say, so it goes from 17 o'clock, right, to yeah. uh, 1930 on uh, day one, which is Thursday, I believe. And then on day two, it goes from 9.30, 9.30 to 11 is our is our second committee time. Um, our committee time, our third committee time is from um, 11.30 to 13.30. Those are two hours. And then our other one goes, on that day, goes from 14.30 to 16.30. Mm -hmm. And then we have a break for the rest of the day. And then we move on to Friday. Our committee will be from 9.00. 9 a.m. until 11, and then committee session six will be from 11:30 to 13 o'clock, and then committee session seven will be from 15:30 to 
and then we have a break for the rest of the day. And then our last committee session is going to be on day four, which I believe is Sunday, um, which is going to be from nine until 11. So I hope if, th if that clarifies it, hopefully. So we'll have like shortish, so like around like each committee sessions will be around two hours and we have up to, we have eight committee sessions in total. Ooh, so. okay. This is actually a good question I think we should address. Mm -hmm. um, so a DTR AD just asked, um, what, what, so in, you guys don't have, don't, haven't seen the character bios yet, but in the character bios, we talked about how a lot of the delegates might be trying to pursue external interests, um, which, and so our, basically our ID, our AD asked us to clarify what that means. Um, oh, sorry, I'm like stepping, oh, no, that's fine. Um, so external interests, that basically means, um, what are you trying to do behind the scenes? So for example, I won't point to any specific delegate because I wouldn't want to call out, I don't know what you guys are thinking yet. But let's say that there's a delegate um, who, um, like, let, let's say that there's a delegate who uh, has an interest, who has interests is like, like we mentioned, um, where corruption is going to be a big goal of this. Let's say that there's a mention, a delegate who's involved with the um, St. Petersburg government and, you know, is, is known to kind of pursue some not so uh, transparent actions there and is known to kind of be involved with kind of corrupt corruption in St. Petersburg. Um then, for example, what a, a delegate who would be pursuing external interests, um, I don't want to give specific examples, but could technically be like calling on those kind of corrupt alliances that that delegate has um, to try and, um, you know, kind of kind of um, improve your own position. So, again, a lot of you probably haven't done crisis before, but something that's really important about crisis is um, and improving improving your own position basically means that you're setting yourself up for later action. So, for example, if I have a bunch of political connections in St. Petersburg, regardless of if they're very legal or not, that would be improving my position. Because that would mean that later on in committee, I could use those political connections to do something else. Um, to potentially, you know, um, I, I, won't even, I won't even go there. But, like, you could, do, you could do a lot of things using those political connections or whatever you want to do. You know, or, you know, in, in committee, a lot of times you see people who... Uh, have laundered money, you know, who are, who have like, who have, you know, uh, taken money from them, from themselves in illegal ways. And yes, while that might be illegal and that might be correct or corrupt, and it might be pursuing, as we said, like um, external interests. Um, if you do it smartly and don't get caught, that could potentially um, improve your own position. So I think that's what we kind of mean by that. Again, I don't want to go into any specifics. I want you guys to be as creative as possible with what you do. Um, but that's, that's kind of, those are examples of what, of what that would potentially mean. Um, so I think that's pretty much, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, do we have anything else? Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. Okay. All right, cool. Well, it was great to talking to you guys, even though it was just us talking. Uh, <laughs> I hope it was good for you guys. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's good to talk about the committee. Um, and I hope that you guys gained something from it. Like we mentioned, um, Email us at reconrussia, R-E-C-O-N-R-U-S-S-I-A, at ilmunkindia, I-L-M-U-N-C dash I-N-D-I-A dot com um, with any questions you have, um, and we'll, we'll definitely respond to them. Um, but and yeah, we're looking forward to you guys. We're really excited for committee. Yeah. Um, yeah. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, that's stop recording. Okay.